This is James Helder for IFL TV in association with Matt Cleese, Jim Marbella. I'm in Sheffield today, just catching up with the Commonwealth champion, Ross Birkinshaw. What's happening, Ross? How's it going, James? All, right, all good. All right. Also joined by Dennis Hobson. What's happening, Den? Good to see you, James, as always. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Fantastic story this is with Ross capturing this belt. Great victory in Doncaster over Jason Cunningham, an unbeaten fighter. Can you talk to me a little bit about, firstly, the fight? Uh, the fight, I was going in with an unbeaten fighter. He'd never even lost a round in boxing. Uh, Central Area champion, English champion, ABA champion. So I knew I was going in with a good guy, but I believed in myself and I knew I was going to come out the winner. Mm. How much notice and preparation did you have this fight? So I'm hearing you took it at quite short notice. Yeah, four days. Mm -hmm. Tuesday the before, I had the phone call, would I take the fight? Straight away I wanted it. Um, obviously spoke to Dennis, went into the gym to meet Ryan. By about half oh, five, six o'clock, Ryan says, you're doing this. I said, do you believe in me? He went, I do. I said, I believe I can win it. So I phoned Dennis up, I said, can we, let, let's take it. So Dennis got onto the board, got onto the Commonwealth Committee. By nine o'clock that night, I'd just got out of the bath, because I'd been training still. Got out of the bath, Dennis phoned me and went, we've got it, and I just, this is it, that's my, it, my say was, it's my time, and I knew it was. Took a lot of guts to take that shot, I know you haven't been back long, you've probably had, what, two four-rounders and a six-rounder before that fight? Yeah, something like that, uh, two, two stoppages and one, uh, one went distance, and that was it, mm -hmm. uh, but, I've been boxing a long time, I've been in the sport 20 years. I've been boxing um, as an amateur, started when I was 11 amateur and then um, turned pro at like 20. So I've been in the sport a long time and I knew, I've always known, believed in myself. When I was um, 12 years old I started carrying Clinton Woods' belt out when Dennis managed and promoted Clinton back then. <laughs> and uh, today my Commonwealth belt hasn't come yet. So I'm doing a work on the Sheffield Wednesday pitch today and Clinton Woods has lent me the belt what I used to carry out uh, for today's That's event. That's fantastic. Dennis, you first come across him as an 11 year old, 12 year old, festering the life out of you to carry this Commonwealth belt around. Yeah, I would have thought this little pest <laughs> would have ended up being a Commonwealth champion. It's, uh, it's a great story, James, and <clears throat> you've known me quite a long time now and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the game for the achievement and uh, memories. Yeah, we all want to earn a few quid and uh, I'll, I'll try and earn Ross as much money as I can, uh, like I tried to with uh, with Clinton and the other fighters what I've been involved with. But um, this story is like uh, Sheffield Wednesday winning, winning, winning the FA Cup uh, this year. Uh, you know, it's a great example to, to a lot of fighters out there who's, who's had losses. Uh, and it comes to a point where uh, Ross was thought of He's found his level, he's not quite got it. Uh, and, it and sometimes you need a fresh start. Um, and you know, sometimes when you get a loss on your record, people are willing to take a, a chance with you. I think, well, he's been beat by him, I can beat him. And sometimes that's, and that's maybe what happened here. Uh, Jason's a quality kid, and I think he'll come again. Uh, but he took the fight at four days notice. He were already training for a six rounder the week after. But it, we were looking at uh, Ross trying to get down a super fly, so we could not. We knew we, we knew we could do the weight comfortable. He's always in great shape. Ryan's just added a little bit more, probably self belief, on what he'd already got. And together as a team, and you know how positive I try and be, and I, and, and, and I, and I like I love to win, like most people do. But you know I'm, I'm probably one of the worst losers out there. I'm a bit of a John McEnroe. <laughs> uh, but, I think all that, and you know, it just shows psychologically and mentally how much it means. And I think just them little tweaks, the fine line between success and failure. And I didn't know if he'd got it in the tank because I know Jason Cunningham had got a fantastic um, engine, and I was just worried that when it got to about eighth round, the eighth round, if uh, if Ross could sustain his onslaught, and the last two or three rounds are what won it for him because he pulled away and he broke Jason's heart. And that's why we sat here with this fantastic belt. Well, that's like you say, psychology. I've got Ryan Rhodes in my corner training me. Ryan doesn't just work with anybody and look at what Ryan achieved and the levels he got. So just that, he was my hero growing up. So it's like I try and do things sometimes to impress him a little bit more. So when, I, when I'm in the corner and he's telling me something, I want to do what he's saying and all that what he's telling me is working. Tell you what, I'd love to have managed and promoted Ryan, because I like as a kid. I think a lot of people would have, to be fair. Well, who knows? Maybe if it had been with me, he might have been a world champion. 
because um, I'm not saying I've got a magic wand, but you know sometimes we get kids the better, best opportunities. Like I've just done with Stuart all getting him the fight on on our on our terms, um, and I think that that's the difference. Kel Brook had to do it the hard way, and credit to the kid because. I thought he were up against it, and especially going to points, I didn't think he could get the decision, but he's done a fantastic number, but it's him what's done it. He's had to go into the backyard, whereas if it had been on home turf, maybe you just get that little bit of an edge, and that's what happened with McDonald, that's what's happened with Stuart Hall. And, um, but, but it shows I'll go into someone's backyard. I was just going to say that, that Ross has gone in the backyard and he's pulled it off, but it needs that extra effort and uh, belief, and that's what he had on that night. And uh, I tell you what, he'll take some beating. I mean, I, I love Jason Cunningham to bits. He's one of the nicest kids. I'm working with Steffi and Steve Phillips, um, and I will work with him again. Uh, but I, I'm not sure if he's a, a bantamweight or super fly. And that's one of the things what's interesting about Ross. We we believe and know he can do super fly as well. So he's got two options there. He's got the bantamweight division. He's got the super flyweight division. But We've got some uh, plenty of unfinished business here at Bantamweight. Definitely. To yourself, as you know, boxing at times can be a very, very dangerous sport. Of course it You've can. only got to look at, at the tragedy suffered la last week in Sheffield again. Jerome Wilson at the moment. Yeah, really, really sad. Now, I was actually sat in the corner of where it, where the knockout happened. Jerome, with my sparring partner, leading up to my last two fights, and when you're sparring with someone, and Jerome's the nicest kid in the world, you get really close to someone. And um, unfortunately, that happened. Tonight, we're having a party to celebrate my win, but it's also to celebrate. Jerome's starting to pull through this, which is great. So, we're going to um, have some collection boxes for the fund, what Dave Caldwell set up to help Jerome in his rehabilitation. So, we're going to have collection boxes down at the Brooklyn restaurant tonight, where my party's at. Uh, Dennis and Sarah, his partners, organised this party for me. It was already planned, and we're going to go ahead with it. We're going to have a good celebration and a good, good drink towards Jerome. Get well soon, Jerome. We're all behind you, Tom. Backing you up, mate. Coming to Bantamweights, Stewie Hall back in action. Am I now believing the fight's going to take place in Monaco? Mm. It's not a bad little, little coup, is it? Um, not bad at all. Uh, I've, I've promoted there before, a long time ago, and uh, it's one of the most prestigious places uh, in the world. And uh, to be involved in a sporting event in Monaco is a bit special and for us to do it on our terms, Stuart's the, like, if you like, the own fighter, I, I won a purse bid. I'm working with Rodney Berman, Martin Murray's on the show, I think there's about four other titles on, on the same show. So it's, it's a great occasion, it's great for Stuart to have on the CV. I'm not sure, the word is I'm getting back is that people think that Stuart's can't beat this Caballero, but a lot of people thought he couldn't beat um, Paul Butler. And I said, it's a 50-50 this. And even after the 12th round, uh, it was still a 50-50 when we went to the judges and he, and he lost on a split decision. So, you know, never write Stuart all off. I'm, I'm confident he can pull tough, this off. This kid's never fought anybody like Stuart. And I, I fancy him, I'll be having a little bit of a punt on him. If Stuart does uh, win his title back against Caballero, mm -hmm. would you, have, would you mm -hmm. have an interest in matching him with Ross the Boss? I can see your cogs ticking there, James. Yeah, uh, listen, anything's possible. Look what happened with Martin Ward. I mean, he won the Commonwealth title all of a sudden through a bit of manoeuvring. We got him. We managed to get him in for a world title, and, and, and it was just a shame that fight didn't take off because of the bad cut that he sustained. But on Martin Ward's CV, he's got a draw for a world title, uh, no matter what the circumstances were. Uh, Ross has got a tall order. He's got to defend against Martin Ward. But if, if, if Ross does the business against Martin Ward. When? Stuart all comes through. Uh, what a matchup that will be! Because I tell you what, in boxing, you put anybody in front of me who's more popular than this kid, and it's not false. It's all genuine. He's one of the nicest kids. I mean, I've known him for years. He's like family to me anyway. Um, so that's what makes it a little bit more special. But he's, he's just a naturally top lad, and he's got an art as big as a lion. And he just probably needed that little bit of change. Uh, you know, an environment, personnel. You know, he's worked with Glenn for a long time. He was a, he was a good friend of ours. Um, but sometimes you need a little bit of change just to just to get a kick up the backside, and that's what's do, maybe done it. And like I said, there's, there's fine lines in boxing, fine lines in any sport, and he just found that fine line uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that's why we've got this belt here. Is there a date set for Martin uh, Ross Birkinshaw to defend against Martin Wolf? 
<coughs> the um, we're gonna we're looking at a couple of days. It's either gonna be the last week in November or the first week in December. Um, but if no matter which date it is, Ross is gonna be involved in quite a, a big event because we believe we're putting together a, a four or five title show. So it's gonna be a bit special. We're trying to put it on in Sheffield um, because obviously Mr. Popular here. We believe it'll sell it out. The only problem we've got December is Christmas time, and uh, a lot of the venues are booked up. But um, we're going to find somewhere, and uh, and we're going to sell it out. And the, the, the atmosphere is going to be tremendous, and it's going to be another memorable night for us. Listen, congratulations on the victory, mate. Thank you, mate. Glad the nose has gone down a little That's bit. That's it. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have blown it in round seven. Saw some horrific pictures going <laughs> about. Oh. I like Avatar. <laughs> me good looks are back now, though. You were telling me earlier, James. A mutant healer, isn't it? <laughs> mutant healer. He is, isn't it? Thanks for giving me some time today. Thank you. Um, I look forward to seeing how the story goes on from here, mate. I really do. Top, man. Always good to see you, James. Thanks, Dennis, mate. Always a that. pleasure. My pleasure, sir. Take care, sir.